Hello all, Jeff here with a new video with something different today. As you can see, this is Rickard Rydell's Volvo S40 BTCC Touring Car from 1998. Brand new mod on Assetto Corsa made by PM3DM. Shout out to all those that have been working on this mod. It is really, really nice. Um, for those wondering, the mod is linked in the description below if you want to check it out. Now, I've had my eye on this car as, as I'm in sim racing for a while because I've been wanting to do something very, very special for a while. And with this mod, we can finally go there. So once the British Touring Car Championship was done in 98, TWR went over the Bathurst for the Super Touring version of the Bathurst 1000. Ricard Rydell punched in a blistering time in the top 10 shootout, doing a two minute 14.93, which would end up being a second and a half quicker than the next car. The lap was so good, it would have put him 15th in the V8 Supercar Bathurst 1000 a month later and just listen to the noise of that five-cylinder engine. Today, I'm gonna to try and beat that two minute 14.93 time with the S40 at Bathurst. This car would end up going on to win the race alongside Jim Richards, that would be his sixth Bathurst victory. This car features the only five-cylinder engine to have ever won the great race. Probably will be the only one unless we see Audi TTRSs and Volvos in the 2027 Supercars Championship. And let's be honest, I highly doubt that's ever going to happen. But anyway, onto our first flying lap, just going through the Sewell Park, just smacking the wall there. Now, one thing is apparent with this car is yes, it's front wheel drive, but you've got that lift off oversteer you have to worry about, so that is a thing. And there you see, just losing it ever so slightly. Yeah, do, do notice with this Bathurst mod on a set of courses, Skyline and the S's isn't that accurate. But anyway, um, the rest of the track is pretty much perfect if you ask me. Now towards the end of a much cleaner lap. Now it is actually very easy to lock the brakes up here, so you've got to be very mindful of that. And we go down Conrod straight. One thing I did notice with the standard setup in this car is the top speed will be constantly banging on the red limiter down corner, so it's pretty much as soon as you get to here at 240k, you are banging on the limiter. These cars in real life are doing at least 250k's down corner. I did hear stories that some were doing 260, so that was one thing I did need to adjust. If you go into the brakes, you're going to chase, braking hard, take a bit of curb, which you wouldn't do with these things in real life. And we go to Murray's Corner, now, very easy to, to misjudge this. So here we go, hard on the brakes, and we've just gone in way too hot. So that's one thing to remember there. No good there. So next one, that staying with the stock setup now, hard on the brakes and chase, and pretty much a little bit more glary out of there. But the thing for me was, was to make sure we get Murray's Corner sorted. So on the brake pedals, on that board on the right, we get things like 100, 150, something like that. And as you can see, that's how you take it. And to start off with, it's a 73, so not too bad at all. So it's a good banker, that's for sure. Now let's make some setup changes. So all we've done is just bumped the ratios of each gear up by one and bumped the final drive up by one to get some extra all down mate on straight and Conrad and as you can see hitting the inside wall at Sky and the S's that's our lap ruin there as you can see now doing over 250 down Conrad getting onto the brakes at down the chase and I've overshot thinking it was the same braking point as before for standard gears obviously not the case now we have to brake a little earlier so we have to keep that in mind so down Conrad for the next proper flying lap so around about here was where I was banging on the limit of the four at 240 k's now I'm doing over 250 so as you can see if I lengthen the gears a bit more I can definitely get a bit more straight line speed out of this thing but I feel this is all we need to to beat the right out time so as you can see just all commitment through the chase here so as we go go the brick under the bridge and breaking hard at that breaking point on the right into Murray's corner. Yes, we get that done. Right a little bit of curb. Shouldn't hurt too much. And we've done a 15-1. We're almost there. So we go again. 
and the skyline, the S's. It's just one of those things. Try and keep it on the aisle. Very, very tricky indeed. But we managed to make that nice and smooth out of the dipper as we head the forest elbow and we've just lost it. That's why I'm trying to shift at the wrong time. Well, we're going to have to go again, aren't we? Now, it's been a while since we've shown you a full lap, so let's do that right now. Nice and smooth out of the Murray's corner to begin the next lap. So here we go. Now, braking into Murray's corner. Just a second after that ball on the, it is where you want to brake. Just ride that curve if you can. I mean, you don't have to, but, you know, it's just up the choice. Obviously, depending on if your stealth is really stiff and you don't really want to hit the curves. I haven't really touched anything there. Anyway, mountain straight. You know, you can, you know, you can relax a little bit here, putting it in the sixth gear here. Now you're pretty much going to break just, just before that, um, that, um, driveway into third gear. Just ride that curb, put in the fourth here, and then the cutting, it's a bit of a foot dance around here. As you can see, you do get a fair bit of lift off over here. You know, I've learned a little bit from Jardy, he always talks about that foot dance. It definitely helps with the mountain. And Reed Tillman Park just slight lifts here and there. It's almost like GT car kind of grip. I mean, obviously they're a lot quicker, but in the same sense, you don't really need a break around here. And I just got a little loose out of Sullivan as we go into McVillian, put him in fifth gear. No, oh, actually put him in fifth and Sullivan, my bad. As we get the skyline, again, it's very weird taking this kind of skyline S is good. It's not that accurate. As we get a bit of over steering in and out of the dipper. That was not ideal, that's for sure. But we still kept it on the eye. As we go into Forest Alba, a little bit of a slide there. Just right in the wall there. Yeah. <laughs> As we get out of there, and we can afford to relax a little bit for Conrad straight, and just, we've got plenty of time to focus on that breaking point for the chase. So, yeah, it's looking good so far. You know, the sectors were up, I just saw saw the top left so that is a very good sign indeed as we plunge down to the chase breaking pretty much on that white sign into second gear that's nice out there using all the curb as you said as I said don't want to do that but never want to do that in real life anyway Murray's going perhaps breaking on that board as we hit the apex here maybe a little bit of grass and what time we're going to do that is a 214.699. We have beaten the Rickard right out time. It did take a bit of time to, to get that one done, that's for sure. But yeah, bes besides that, it is such an amazing lap he did. And it's almost a predecessor to the lap of the gods. So yeah, there you have it. I will leave you with a TV camera replay of the lap with no talking. But if you did like the video, smash the thumbs up button, leave a comment, let me know what you think of this. And if you do want to see more of my content, maybe consider subscribing and tapping the notification icon. Anyway, this is Jeff here. Happy racing. Cheers and goodbye.